chapter 4. Jesus goes to Galilee. So when the Lord learned that the Pharisees had been told that Jesus was making and baptizing more disciples than John, although Jesus himself was not baptizing, but his disciples were, he left Judea and returned again to Galilee. Now he had to go through Samaria. So he arrived at a Samaritan town called Sychar, near the tract of land that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. And Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, tired as he was from his journey, sat down by the well. It was then about the sixth hour, which is noon. Then a woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone off to the city to buy some food. The Samaritan woman asked him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? For Jews have nothing to do with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew about God's gift of eternal life, and who it is who says, Give me a drink, you would have asked him instead, and he would have given you living water, eternal life. She said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, no bucket and rope, when the well is deep. Where then do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well, and who used to drink from it himself and his sons and his cattle also? Jesus answered her, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water that I give him will never be thirsty again, but the water that I give him will become in him a spring of water. Satisfying his thirst for God, welling up, continually flowing and bubbling within him to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not get thirsty nor have to continually come all the way here to draw it. At this Jesus said, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered, I don't have a husband. Jesus said to her, You have correctly said, I don't have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and the man you are now living with is not your husband. You have said this truthfully. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews say that the place where one ought to worship is in Jerusalem at the temple. Jesus replied, Woman, believe me, a time is coming when God's kingdom comes, when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans do not know what you worship, and we Jews do know what we worship, for salvation is from the Jews. But a time is coming, and is already here, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit, from the heart, the inner self, and in truth, for the Father seeks such people to be his worshipers. God is spirit, the source of life, yet invisible to mankind, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ, the anointed. When that one comes, he will tell us everything we need to know. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came, and they were surprised to find him talking with a woman, much less a Samaritan. However, no one said, what are you asking about, or why are you talking to her? Then the woman left her water jar and went into the city and began telling the people, Come, see a man who told me all the things that I have done. Can this be the Christ, the Messiah, and the Anointed? So the people left the city and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus to have a meal, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he told them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me, and to completely finish his work. Do you not say, It is still four months until the harvest to come? Look, I say to you, raise your eyes and look at the fields and see, they are white for harvest. Already the reaper is receiving his wages, and he is gathering fruit for eternal life, so that he who plants and he who reaps may rejoice together. For in this case the saying is true, one person sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap a crop for which you have not worked. Others have worked, and you have been privileged to reap the results of their work. Now many Samaritans from that city believed in him and trusted him as Savior because of what the woman 
said when she testified, He told me all the things that I have done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they asked him to remain with them, and he stayed there two days. Many more believed in him with a deep abiding trust because of his word, his personal message to them. And they told the woman, we no longer believe just because of what you said, for now we have heard him for ourselves and know with confident assurance that this one is truly the savior of all the world. After two days, he went on from there to Galilee, for Jesus himself declared that a prophet has no honor in his own country. So when he arrived in Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they hadn't seen all the things that he had done in Jerusalem in the feast, for they too had come to that feast and seen all the stuff, the miracles and the stuff. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. And there was a certain royal officer whose son was sick in Capernaum. Having heard that Jesus had come back from Judea to Galilee, he went to meet him and began to ask him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, Unless you people see miraculous signs and wonders, you simply will not believe. The royal official pleaded with him, Sir, do come down at once before my child dies. Jesus said to him, Go, your son lives. The man believed what Jesus said to him and started home. As he was already going down the road, his servants met him and reported that his son was living and healthy. So he asked them at what time he began to get better. They said, yesterday during the seventh hour, the fever left him. Then the father realized that it was at that very hour when Jesus had said to him, your son lives, and he and his entire household believed and confidently trusted in him as savior. This is the second sign, a testing miracle that Jesus performed in Cana after he had come from Judea to Galilee, revealing that he is the Messiah.